good afternoon and welcome to the Platt Lane Sports Complex. We're here this afternoon for pre-season friendly for the Vitality Netball Super League between Manchester Thunder and London Pulse. Just had a few technical issues there to start with, so apologies for that, but we're live with you now. I'd like to introduce to you a very, very special guest this afternoon. We've just pulled in from the side of the football pitch. Um, I'm pleased to introduce Gary Neville. Hi, Debbie, how are you? Hi, everyone that's watching. Yeah, it's great to see um, we've got quite a few people on the feed already this afternoon. So you're down here watching Salford. Yeah, we're obviously at Platt Lane and Salford's youth team have just played Fleetwood and we uh, won 3-2 in a quite an exciting game. And then you just grabbed me, kidnapped me <laughs> and brought me inside to do some cold commentary on netball, which I'm happy to do, actually, because nothing happened at home. <laughs> No, well, we're very pleased to have you here. Um, obviously, you're the professional in this uh, <laughs> outfit. So we'll just run through the starting sevens quickly. For Manchester Thunder, goal shooter, we have Joyce Mavula. At goal attack, Lois Pearson. Wing attack is Caroline O'Hanlon. Centre is Amy Carter. Wing defence, Rebecca Airy. Goal defence, Emma Dovey. And at the back, we have goalkeeper, Lauren Naguira. The London Pulse, goal shooter is Siggy Berger, goal attack is Lafer Baradaman, wing attack Dean Thomas, centre is Ash Decker, wing defence Zara Everett, goal defence Lindsay Keeble and goalkeeper Halimat Adio. So we're very pleased so far that within pre-season we've managed to have a few pre-season games so far, in these times it's very difficult, um, but we're so pleased as far as netball goes that Elite Sport, uh, or we're allowed to continue under the Elite Sport banner. Obviously football were the first really to uh, yeah. to get back playing, unfortunately. Our league, our 2020 season was cancelled. Um, and we're now back up and running for the 2021 season. So there are clearly some differences between the sports, Gary. So football obviously have the financial backing. You know, they were able to, the first sports come back, they were able to get the testing in place, all the protocols in place. I think that um, for me, I was really cautious around the first lockdown. Uh, obviously we didn't know a lot about the virus. It was very unique for everybody and there was quite a lot of fear and anxiety about what would happen. And it was right to be cautious about a return of sport particularly when sport was the first, or football in particular, was the one of the first things to return to normal. But I think now, six, seven, eight months later, when football has operated safely, obviously there are positive tests um, within football, but at a sort of very low percentage level. Um, obviously there's no impact upon the NHS, which is the most important thing on elite sport. And I think the big thing also is the morale that elite sport, obviously there'll be probably well over a thousand people watching this today and it's giving people a morale boost and some respite from what are difficult times when they're at home people are having mental health issues they're not able to go to work they're not able to go out and socialize see the friends the family particularly over christmas so i do th i am a believer now i was cautious first time round, but i think certainly now it's important that elite sport because it's proven it can operate safely it's football and obviously netball as well that we, go, that we go for it and we try and get life back to normal as possible, understanding that we're in obviously the midst of another lockdown and that there is obviously a lot of heartache, but you know, elite sport is giving people some much needed uh, welcome, I suppose, rest from what would be the daily um, routine of doing nothing. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's, you know, there's, a, there's a lot of people out there that, um, you know, are not able to, to play sport, netball, other than this level, is unable to go ahead at the moment. So it's great that we're able to, able to provide this. Now, we had, we had a festival um, ahead of Christmas, the Netball's Rise Again Festival, which, you know, was, was hugely successful. You know, we've got professional product out there, um, enabling people ahead of Christmas to watch it. And we're doing our best at the moment to try and bring people some netball. Yeah. Um, and, you know, hence doing this today. It, look, what we shouldn't forget is that, you know, waking up every single day and thinking about some form of inspiration, some form of happiness, and that can be a game of netball, it can be a game of football, it can be a walk, it can be a cycle, whatever it is at this moment in time that's keeping you going. And also, all the key workers, doctors, nurses, policemen, firemen that are continuing, uh, uh, service, sorry, that are continuing to work throughout all uh, this pandemic. You know, hopefully it's bringing some much needed sort of 
inspiration to them and, 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 yeah. re and release for them because they're obviously going through a far more difficult time than we are. Um, and that's what a whole police sport is at this moment in time. It's a release to everybody else in the country who needs it. Uh, there are some people who feel that maybe elite sports should shut down and lock down at the same time as national lockdown. I'm not one of those people. I think if there was any health risk or an impact upon the NHS, I'd be saying absolutely, let's close it down straight away. But there isn't, and you know, we're seeing obviously fantastic sports on television over the last few months. Uh, even though the fans aren't in the stadium in any sport, which obviously is important that we don't do that at this moment in time. But I think that. Like I say, I'm watching this today now and it's it's fantastic just to see and I'm hoping that everybody that's watching on the channel is, is, is enjoying it as well. Yeah, absolutely. And, and um, alluding to your points around the safety and not putting the pressure on the NHS. So this is what took the time for netball uh, because we don't have the resources and, and necessarily the same finances as maybe football. No. But now we've got the things in place. We, we have COVID medical officers on site. We have blue light ambulance on site. So we're not putting that extra pressure on the NHS. We're fortunate we've had some central funding from the league now to help with those costs. And also, uh, when the league does start, well, from next week, the players will be undergoing testing. But uh, ahead of this game, the two teams we agreed um, that we would test ahead of this game. Just obviously, there's a lot of anxiety around, as, as you've said. So uh, fortunately, everybody has uh, tested negative ahead of the game. So, but everybody has that, um, you know, the, uh, safe in the knowledge that they know everybody around them is uh, is negative. So that's great that we can go ahead. Yeah, and I think what's really important is, you know, you're an elite sports person. Um, some people call them sacrifices when you have to give up maybe going out and, you know, eating in ba uh, bars and restaurants and drinking and maybe having to show extra discipline. It's not, it's the choice you've made and you're very privileged to play elite sport. So there have been some cases whereby there have been sort of a, you know, la a lack of discipline at times, but they are very rare. You know, elite sports people should be expected to be disciplined, to isolate, to make sure that they do their training as safely as possible, to enable them to be able to play, to enable them to be able to put on the show, which hopefully people at home can watch. So you say the testing's in place, um, there isn't any greater impact upon the NHS because the medical, uh, the COVID officers are on site. And that's what gives me the comfort that really we should press ahead with elite sport at this time because the morale boost it's giving to people um, it, it, it's, it's really a big thing. Absolutely, so let's have, uh, we've uh, done quite a bit of talking there, so we'll, uh, obviously important key things in these times and to give people a bit of background. So looking at the game today, obviously we've got um, Thunder today without the two England Roses, which is Laura Malcolm and Eleanor Cardwell. They're actually in England camp at the moment. So we've started probably with a slightly different uh, starting seven that we've got um, youngster Lois Pearson in at goal attack. We've got Caroline O'Hanlon in the wing attack position with Amy Carter at centre. And the defence of Maguire, Dovey and Airy. Now they've shown up well. Uh, we played pre-season game last week against the Strathclyde Sirens. And uh, for once, we were notoriously slow starters, but for once we came out on fire and the defence were really clicking. Um, they turned over a lot of ball. And at the other end, our shooter Joyce just receiving the ball there. She was absolutely on fire. Well, you can imagine how desperate that they must be just to play again, having obviously lost last season, and just to get back again and playing competitive netball. Um, it always mesmerises me, obviously I've been fortunate over the years to watch some of my sister's games either with Thunder or with uh, with England and obviously I even go and watch my two daughters play when they're obviously playing and the, the speed of the game and the skill and the, um, the quality of it is absolutely fantastic, you know you have to really be sort of here looking over it to see how quick it really is and the fitness levels, you, know, you shouldn't be surprised because obviously we you know that elite sports like that but I would imagine that these two teams are just desperate to get going and really fly because obviously they've missed their netball, they've missed their, the thing that they do, for, you know, the love of their life really in terms of the sport. It is and, and you know, these, these players, the majority of them have jobs aside of netball, they train yeah. as a professional and they have uh, you know, full-time jobs or full-time students. You know, and the, there is that, that is still that differential in netball. They're not really full-time professionals. No. Um, we're not quite there. And we're 
Neville was making such progress yeah. and it couldn't probably have hit at a worse time for our sport but we're at a position now you know we're getting back we're getting our league back and hopefully we won't lose too much of that momentum no I, I go back 25 years to when I was in my early days at United and my sister I think gave up uh, her degree at the time to concentrate full time on netball and made that choice obviously to sort of pursue it and uh, try and do it more full time and she was supported obviously at the time by the family um, and you think now obviously that the netball prominence is a lot higher, it's on television a lot more, the exposure is a lot greater and it's absolutely right because when you think of the uptake in netball in the last five to ten years it's absolutely incredible, it just seemed to me that you know I'm obviously aware of it because my two daughters are playing all the time and I go down to Phillips High School on a Sunday and it literally feels like there's thousands of kids just down there playing netball and I don't think it was ever like that maybe 25, 30 years ago, it didn't feel like that, I used to go watch my mum play and there were one or two games on a Monday evening, but I just never felt as though there was the real sort of volume of young people taking the game up. But now it would seem that really is happening. I mean, that must be, is that happening in the numbers? Is that the, what has been the increase in the last five or 10 years? It must be a, a big one. Um, yeah, the, I mean, I think there's been uh, big events even over the last few years that have uh, significantly impacted. Obviously, um, the gold medal we won at the Commonwealth yeah. Games, that had an impact on numbers. Um, and the World Cup um, that was hosted in Liverpool. So yeah. since then, numbers have kind of have rocketed since then. Ooh. Just a clash there between Decker and Airy. Hopefully everybody's okay to carry on. Oh, no, maybe not. No, it's just twisted, twisted the left ankle, I think. Yeah. Decker going off there. Just update you with who's replaced on the second. So you're talking about your daughters there. So your daughters uh, playing at Oldham Netball Club. They are, the yes, club. and they absolutely love it. They adore it. Um, obviously, before this lockdown, and when they were able to, they. My sister comes up sometimes in the house and does little sessions with them and gives them a program to. And obviously, Oldham Netball give them a program to do as well. And they absolutely love the sport, um, they're addicted to it and they're addicted to my sister as well. <laughs> they like my sister a lot more than they like me. Um, but it is that type of thing. I remember growing up in a, a sporting family and just my mum playing netball and rounders. It was just absolutely fantastic and it's just great to be here today to see this. Yeah, so we've just finished the first quarter there with Home Team Thunder leading 14-7. So yeah, obviously, um, you know, your daughter's moving to Oldham, probably the most successful club in the country, not biased, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but having won, you know, numerous junior national titles, um, eight out of nine Premier League titles, they're a successful club. So um, having um, an auntie like Tracy <laughs> Neville, they've uh, looks like they're they're in the. Uh, the best place in the best hands at the moment. Yeah, well, look, they're inspired by obviously, you know, my sister. They're inspired by obviously watching her games. You know, you know, they still now put on the old Thunder games where she was the coach. They put on every single um, one of the Super League games that's on television. They go over to my mum's and they watch the games um, that are on television, and it's just something that you know you want your, you want your children if you can to grow up in a sporting family. The discipline it gives them. The, the idea of that emotion of sport, the teamwork, all the things that are going to stand you in good stead in life. Um, we were brought up that way and sport was an enabler for us to sort of do what we've done. And even if you don't make it as an elite sports person, I just think for your well-being, mental health, the idea of understanding success and failure, all those lessons that you're going to have in your life are, are taught through sport. And my, my, you know, I was very keen that obviously my daughters were able to sort of go into spot and they've chosen netball um, which is obviously something that was uh, running in our family through my sister and uh, and my mum as well yeah and I think you know sport is very important like you say for uh, not just physically mentally and for everybody's well-being and that's why you know we, sport has been trying to get back at all levels so and and when you were youngster wasn't it between football and cricket you and Phil were yeah Phil had a real choice between football and cricket I probably was definitely more biased to football but Philip had a real choice. He was playing for England at uh, under 16s, 15s, 14s at cricket, and obviously was doing really well at the football side as well. But I'd gone to United, and he chose to follow me into United, which 
um, you know, turned out for him to be the right decision as well. You know, you, it was a risk maybe because he was a very good cricketer. Uh, for my sister, she obviously, you know, came through and broke into the England teams at netball, and you know, didn't have that choice to make, but um, certainly pursued it with determination as you need to do when you when you when you when you love sport and play sport. Yeah, and just uh, looking up a quick stat there. So you talk about participation numbers. So obviously, uh, prior to the pandemic, uh, there were 317,000 over 16s playing at least once a fortnight. So those are pretty significant numbers. It's a lot. I mean, that must be, like I say, the numbers have rocketed in this last five or ten years. The prominence of the sport, the professionalism, obviously the Super League, the way in which the England team have performed. Um, it's now getting to a level of exposure that it should always have been at and needs to obviously improve even more. And the main thing is obviously the funding. You know, this idea that you've got this funding uh, threat leaving you if you don't get a bronze medal, if you don't get a silver medal. To me, that's not how it should be. Sport, you win and lose in sport. And I think for me, I, I get the fact that obviously, you know, people want success. But I think when you look at participation throughout the actual schools and through young people, that's the most important thing. And sports that are really participated in, like netball, should be funded properly. Uh, and government really should see sport as the answer to a lot of the problems around crime prevention, mental health, well-being, obviously you know, education, um, the health service. If you think about it, the more people you get into sport and the more people that play it, the more answers you could have for those other issues which are social issues so for me it's something that always has been a problem selling off school fields not investing in sport and netball's obviously suffered as much as any sport over the last 10 15 20 years but it's now starting to get a little bit more funding uh, which yeah. is important well yeah because there's, there's the key things that um, the challenges that we've had around it you know football clubs have their own grounds you know they can make those as safe as possible they can have them whenever they want a, a big challenge for netball is, is even getting a venue yeah um, and you know a lot of venues have closed down uh, so even when the sport and community levels is trying to get back trying to get those venues was difficult you know and, and there's only certain venues at the moment that we can that we, you know we're, we're able to use to, to train and, and, and to play these pre-season games uh, yeah I mean it, it, when I think of obviously the wealth in the sport that I'm involved in most football and to think that prominent sports and major sports in this country and women's sports in this country don't get the same level of funding and attention. But that's where subsidy from government, from, from obviously Sport England, from the lottery funding, all that just needs to be brought together to ensure that the funding is in place for sports um, that are so important to the sort of national fabric of which netball is. Yeah, absolutely. And I think and again a, a challenge for us I mean you see women's sport you see the growth in women's football which yeah. has been, been fairly phenomenal I think yeah I mean there's still obviously quite a disparity between the men's game but um, but they have the funding and the infrastructure from the men's sport whereas netball is I know men play it but at the elite level we're still, we're still very much a women only sport um, Hopefully no men will get upset when we're there, that is, the, you know, that is the truth. We have men playing, we have mixed netball, which is great, and there's more and more men's netball out there. Unfortunately, they're not able to play at the minute, apart from, um, actually, London Pulse's team here. You're allowed to name extra training associates. Right. So, you know, when you're losing people to the England programme or things like that, or if, if you're losing people that might, may have posted, te uh, tested positive even, um, so London Pulse have actually named some of uh, some men as their training associates, um, which is you know which is great. Quite often we have preseason friendlies or games against the men yeah. ahead of the league because it gives you a different physical challenge, a different yeah. aspect to the game, and, and that, that was something Tracy brought in actually as uh, Manchester Thunder coach. We used to play against uh, some of like the Manchester Giants players. Uh, she brought them into training. Especially if we're going up against like a tall shooter would stick under the basketball lads and you know, using them as that target. Yeah. I mean they're just generally you think if you go back in this country you know just generally equality, inclusion, diversity has been a huge issue in this you know, not just in this country but all over the world. Um, and there is no doubt that in this last five years we have a better chance of correcting and equalising the situation with regards to funding between men's and women's sports. Um, because I think now there is an acceptance that it's just been wholly wrong. 
Um, and that's the first thing, he's, you know, he's, he's accepting that there is a problem. Once you accept there's a problem, then you can correct it. Whereas I think 10, 15 years ago, I think people didn't even see there was a problem. People wouldn't understand yeah. uh, there was a problem. It was almost a sort of anonymous, uh, it, was, it was, you know, I'll say 25 years ago, my sister made the decision to do what she did. She had to be supported financially by obviously a family to be able to do what she did. Well, how many people can do that? You know, you, you, you have to live. So the idea now that at least we are getting some funding into sport to have central contracts, obviously with the with the England netball team, at least that's a start. Yeah. Um, and then we obviously need to move that down through all the different sort of various teams in, in netball to enable the excellence to come forward and participation, participation to grow without that fear of really thinking that, you know, you've got to make a choice between a job and a sport, which yeah. is not really the right, that can't be right when you're talking about elite sport. No, you're absolutely right. And, you know, I suppose that is a fear within netball. You know, we don't want our sport to, to, to be seen as or, or to become elitist. And it becomes, as we're trying to push the programmes forward, you know, the, like the academies and the, and the pathway, we're, more and more is being asked of us as a club, more and more is asked of the players. Um, and we don't get our funding is reducing year on year so then we have to go to the players have yeah. to subsidize that or the players parents obviously yeah. but we you know we'd like to be in a position where we didn't have to ask that as a club we do because you know us as a club we're an independent club we have to raise all the money ourselves we don't have any central funding so everything has to pay for itself and we yeah. all you know or we have to raise the money through sponsorship or through ticketing which obviously at the moment there's no ticketing revenue. We've lost a lot of our revenue streams. All the community work that we do, we're unable to do that at the moment. So at the moment, we're literally reliant on, on sponsorship. So, you know, it'd be going forward, you know, it's bringing more funding into sport. I know at the moment we've we submitted a bid to the DCMS this week in the hope that we get some funding towards our operational costs this year. They did put forward um, 1.7 million for our league but that was all in the form of loans but yeah. as far as clubs are concerned a loan kind of only puts the problem down the yeah, road yeah, yeah. it doesn't help us at this stage and you know looking at where our sport is you know a grant really is the only way that we would or that would help us I, I mean even just listening to you Debbie it's absolutely ridiculous um, that DCMS would put loans forward that you have to pay back uh, when you think about the participation levels and the inspiration that netball is giving to so many hundreds of thousands of people in the country and it should just be a right but the problem is you see if you think about it at sort of a, a, a high level do you believe that every young person in this country should have access to a sports facility to be able to play sport for their mental health, their well-being, uh, participation? Absolutely. If you don't believe that, you end up where we did 25 years ago, selling off all the sports facilities and sports fields and believing that everybody should pay for everything. You know, we believe that obviously there's the NHS, there's education. Sport should form part of that solution in terms of sort of the, the education and, uh, and well-being piece. and. Unfortunately, we've never really had a government that's put sport where it should be because it is a national passion, whether it's rugby, cricket, football, netball, tennis, golf, whatever it may be that you do, cycling, uh, running, it's, uh, it's incredible really. So going back to the game, um, obviously getting carried away a little bit there, but it's important topics. Hopefully we'll pick up uh, a little more of that at half time. So under here we've still maintained a seven goal lead from half time. Great split there from Joyce Mavula. So she's working well at the moment with Lois Pearson there in attack. Got the experience of Caroline O'Hanlon and Amy Carter feeding them. We see another youngster who's entered the court. We've got Ella Standring at wing defence. So 
himself under here are finding it more and more difficult. Pulse are putting that defensive pressure on. So just taking the time, showing all the experience in the world. Josh McCullough makes it 23 goals to 15. Can you tell me what Tracy's doing sat over there on the bench? What's she up to? <laughs> <laughs> um, what could I possibly say, Gary? Oh, no, but you may, uh, may see a little press release this week, so... Oh, right, sorry. <laughs> I just let it out of the bag there. <laughs> Not like me to put my foot in it. <laughs> no, she's uh, had a year out of the sport in the middle of a pandemic, and, uh, and yeah, once... Uh, <laughs> Put some netball back in the life. <laughs> I get told everything last you see in our family. Oh, yeah. Don't get, oh yeah, I'm last to know. They'll, they would say least, in, <laughs> they say because I'm not interested probably, but I am. <laughs> Wish they'd tell me. So Thunder extending the lead there, going out to nine. Be, uh, <clears throat> be very interested to see this, how Pulse do this season. They came into the league in 2018 you know it's great to see a team coming out of the capital out of London they started last season strongly even though we only had well some teams had three games we managed four we did a few so London Pulse were right up there um, and it would have been interesting to see how their season unfolded I could see them really pushing for a playoff place for the first time. And this year, they've signed another South African, so they've got a, a dual, uh, two South African shooters, the Sigiberger and the Ferber Radman. We saw Radman in the first quarter. Are you confident this year you'll win? Always confident. <laughs> That's, Karen tells me we're gonna win, I'll back Karen. No, I mean, we, we go in there, you know, with. I mean, this year is a year completely different to any other time, but, you know, we we try and build a strong squad. Um, I think we've got a squad filled with plenty of youth, uh, a good balance of experience. Um, we've got two um, international players in there, two Malawians. We've got the Northern Ireland captain in there. So we've got a real good, strong kind of um, international flavour around the team as well. Um, and no excuses <laughs> <laughs> anyway well, if you want to hear more about netball team. you need to kick me off this commentary and let me get home and watch United play because I, I, honestly they, they better win tonight or else I'll be depressed sorry for some City fans and other fans of other football <laughs> clubs listening <laughs> uh, what do you want to watch United over, uh, over Manchester Thunder Oh, actually, I'm enjoying it, but I think that but maybe the people that are watching want to hear a little bit more expertise on the netball side of things. And I'm not going to go into that territory. I'm, I'm, I know, I, I know the rules. I know the, I know the game, but I think I'd be uh, out of my depth. I think. <laughs> and United, I, I think it's oh, it's eight o'clock. Kick off United, actually. Oh, so, you've got plenty of time to get home. I have, but I've got to have my tea first and you know sort myself out. <laughs> Okay, so after the second quarter, the score is 26 17. As I said, we saw Thunder extend the lead, uh, but Pulse by no means are lying down. They're putting significant defensive pressure on there. As I was talking about, we've got the two South African shooters, and some of you out there um, kind of knowing vaguely around the Super League rules um, that you're not allowed to imports in the same area so for example you couldn't have uh, two imports play in centre and wing attack because that's the same area of the court or you couldn't have two in playing goalkeeper goal defence because uh, we are limited to two imports okay. within our team um, however Sigi Berger is actually on a European passport um, so she doesn't qualify as an actual import so uh, if anybody's wondering that there's a little bit of knowledge for you our two imports are Joyce Mavula and Lorene Naguera, two Malawian queens. So they've returned to us um, a 
few weeks before Christmas. Wanted to get them here to ensure they were here and settled and underwent the quarantine because mm. we had to um, to get them home during a pandemic was pretty difficult. Um, we actually had to work with the Zambian Netball Association as well as the Malawian one and we had to fly them to Zambia and then they got special permission to cross the border to get back to Malawi so they could get back into Why? their own country. Why? There, there were no flights into Malawi, they closed oh, okay. the airports. I've been so. to Malawi. Have you? Yeah, I went about 15 years ago. Um, and it's a country that I, th I think at the time it was one of the second poorest countries in the world. The life expectancy was there was terrible and no natural resources, so not able to be able to call upon any sort of. And um, it, was, it, it was an amazing trip. I went with Rio Ferdinand and David James, and we were talking about farming projects and sort of trying to create their own produce and things, and it was really interesting. Yeah, well. It's really amazing when you you know you talk to the girls and you kind of um, we've built up quite a relationship with the Malawian yeah. family with the Manchester Malawian Association and you realise that um, a monthly wage here is equivalent to an annual wage in Malawi yeah. at the moment. Yeah. So for them you know to to come and play netball here, even though the money within netball is not particularly. Um, you know, it's obviously no one here like football, but that to them is, you know, it's quite an achievement, and you know, it's, you know, they send yeah. money home to their families, and it's, it's just crazy the differences between, between the countries. Yeah. So we've a few changes here. We'll start with the Thunder changes. So we've got Amy Carter on at wing, oh, moving to wing attack, changing patches. Obviously, there are different patches in this pandemic, I will make it clear, but changing patches with Caroline O'Hanlon, who's moved to centre. Rebecca Airy has come into the goal defence position, taking over from Emma Dover. So, Gary, are you leaving us now? I think I'm going to leave you. I'm going to... I've enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I think I'll uh, go home and watch United, as I say, and it looks like the team are doing really well, look sharp, and... Apologies for releasing the news on here that I shouldn't have done before. <laughs> no, that's fine. Don't Thank worry. you, everybody. Thanks, so, Debbie. Yeah, Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Much. Thanks, Thank Gary. You. We'll Thank now you. replace Gary with uh, a Thunder legend. And we can talk a little bit more about netball. So, I'm delighted to introduce Thunder legend goalkeeper Kerry Almond. Just uh, just called from, from Twitter, so maybe got somebody else new on Twitter, but. So what are your thoughts so far on the game, Kerry? Obviously not, Thunder in the lead. I've not managed to watch too much of it so far. I've been staring at the keyboard for a bit. Um, but I think so far, um, you know, there's not been too many changes from Thunder so far. I've seen in this period we've got um, Barry Neal's on at goal attack. Amy and Caroline have switched over. And obviously now Bex is into goal defence. Um, I think everyone's looking really, really strong. Um, someone's just commented on Twitter that um, about how seeing Caroline slot so seamlessly into wing attack just shows what kind of a superstar she is, and you know I couldn't disagree on that at all. She's um, she's a powerhouse in the centre court, and yeah, yeah, she is experienced professional. I know. I think both teams so are doing some really, really good stuff, though. Yeah, we're just talking there about um, the imports from Pulse, obviously the two South Africans in the circle. We've gone over the, the rules and regulations of, of why they're in that circle together. We've got some more international flavour here in Nadine Thomas, the Jamaican international. Yeah, she's uh, switched over to centre for this one. She, she was at wing attack initially, but I think she's showing a little bit of versatility there. Um, she's got a lot of flair in, in centre, but I know the first couple of games last season, um, obviously people were raving about her skills and you know the yeah I think she, she picked got. up player of the match uh, I saw in one of the games obviously there weren't many games but I think in the few games that she did play she certainly was uh, was showing well great insight there from uh, youngster Alessandra and read that ball beautifully and came up with the turnover yeah so I think it'll be interesting this season looking at uh, the dynamics of the Thunder team certainly in the centre court um, I think the the main part will be who's playing wing attack oh, now. 
as we've seen through plenty of uh, the pre-season games so far, Laura Malcolm has pretty much played that position. Um, with uh, the start in the games there with Caroline at centre and Amy Carter at wing defence. And now we've seen we've seen Caroline there a few times. So Karen's obviously looking at those options, playing people around. We're seeing Amy Carter there now. What are your thoughts on who do you think would be the best combination? I think having obviously seen uh, most of these preseason games now, I think um, I would say personally I think the strongest wing attack would be Laura. Um, she's a obviously she's a, a cracking centre court player all around. She can play across all three positions. I just think as a wing attack, she does bring something that a little bit different. She's she's quite steady with it, so you're not it, you're not going to get these balls flying in from everywhere. She's going to be very calm and, and collected with it. Um, and I think when you've got a lot of youngsters around, you obviously you've got a lot of young goal attacks as well. I think that's going to be something that's needed. But I think she also links really, really well with Ellie Cardwell, so I think that's that's a, a massive plus for us. Um, and when you've still got Caroline and Amy for your central wing defence position, you're not exactly losing anything. Yeah, I think, uh, like you say, Laura and Ellen have played together for many years, so they have got that, that relationship. They know each other's game very well. And um, we'll just give them a quick shout out to Laura and, en Laura and Eleanor. Your England camp. I'm sure you're probably busy training or doing something, but hopefully you've managed to sneak a bit of a watch. This is really interesting for me as well because I've never really seen too much of Olivia Tachin play. Um, it's just quite interesting seeing her game. I'm saying she's a, a tall, athletic player, so it's actually really interesting watching that battle in the circle. The first two quarters, we had the, uh, the battle in there with um, Lauren versus Siggy, which is always interesting. South Africa versus. Malawi, so that's you now it's something a little bit different for, for Lauren to play up against. I think she's doing a great job so far in this game. Great ball in there from Carter and a great drive from Barry Neal, one of our other um, pathway youngsters that's come up. I think you can still see a little bit of element of rustiness from both teams in this game today. There's a few few wayward passes here and there but that's to be expected at this stage of pre-season I think. Great take there from Joyce over top of Lindsay Keeble. Yeah I don't think Lindsay was too happy with the decision there but Joyce was you know she she was assertive she took the ball. So I'm excited to see what um, Funmi for Pulse does and as she moves forward with her career just a youngster now we saw her first of all come through um, through Premier League as, as we saw played for New Campbell. Campbell. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, as uh, many of my players found out, she can jump. There was yeah, there was one particular game where I think we, we threw about four or five balls in a row straight into her hands um, and Debbie did scream at us that she could jump. Um, and I think it's she's she's done really well she obviously came on really well last season um but she's got all the potential and all the all the skills there to make it all the way to the top i'm not quite sure on where i think her best position is as to whether it's goal defense or wing defense but i think she can certainly play play across both what she lacks in height as a goal defense she even more than makes up for an air time yeah and, and obviously deceptive as well because because of her well not lack of height but as far as a goal defense goes she's smaller than most but as you say, makes up for it, and that deceptiveness in taking that, uh, in taking that ball, or even from the pass. It's a, a good battle in there at the moment between uh, Joyce and Lindsay Keeble. Um, neither of them are giving anything away at all. I think there are quite a lot of similarities between the the two teams, between like the international flavour that we're talking about, between both teams having great youth systems, you know, Pulse are always up there in, at the NPL levels, you can see the players coming through like Olivia Sachin, Funmi, uh, Kira Rothwell, and they're, they're all in there with, you know, with a blend of youth and experience, so you can only see a bright future for Pulse. Yeah, and I think it's really important that we do have um, strong franchises um, spread throughout the country rather than obviously just being concentrated in a couple of areas. So it's, it's really nice to see their pathway players um, coming through, like you said, much like our own. And I think 
that's what I was really pleased about this season when Karen announced um, the, the the two players in there um, with Berry and Lois. Um, I think it, it, it just shows your pathway players, for whichever franchise it is, that you can break through and you can make it in there. And to be honest, watching the way that Lois played in those first two periods, it looks like she's been playing at this level for years. Nice little spin there for Olivia and uh, Lauren just couldn't, couldn't find her, unfortunately. And there we go. Yeah, so we've seen at um, one of our previous pre-season games, you had a good chat with Lauren, who's uh, stepped into your large shoes. There's no need to discuss my shoe size. <laughs> yeah, she's um, she's always willing to learn. Um, yeah, she just came up to me and asked me a couple of questions and just passed on whatever experience that I could could give to her. Um, but yeah, she uh, she's certainly showing signs of, of huge improvement. Obviously, she came to Thunder from Pulse. Um, once I retired um, and yeah she's she's come on leaps and bounds in the in the time periods that I've seen her play that's for sure yeah I mean, as we found out obviously once you know you you took the decision to retire um, just in those those final times and obviously I was then looking to recruit or you know who's coming through at goalkeeper and I think I think countrywide that is a problem because I don't necessarily see particularly first of all tall goalkeepers because you know I'm involved in that ball uh, across many levels and you know you look at the all tall girls coming through seem to get shoved into that shooter role yeah coach, because you're don't, tall don't let's get them into the shooter and turn some of them into defenders at some point but I think that obviously now is reflecting in you know so who's available and when you look at the lack of goalkeepers out there you know even at at international level, in, well, nice. you look at the England yeah. Roses, you know, who's going to succeed Juve Mensa? I know there's Razzy Quashes in there, but you wouldn't perhaps consider, you know, she's not the tallest, you know, and when you come up against someone like Fowler Reed, you know, who's going to be that next person? Yeah, I think it's probably a gap that um, it's something that the England team got to kind of, kind of work on. We're focused on, obviously, we've had Juve for, for so many years. Um, and it is something that we probably do need to to look at, but you know, there's a couple. There's only well, I was actually saying that there's only a year now until the next Commonwealth Games. Um, but yeah, I think uh, in, in the coming years it is something that we do need to look at. So coaches, if you see a tall person, don't always shove them into shoot because we do need some tall defenders to play against them at some point. <laughs> I'm not biased or anything. Um, so that's the end of the third period, and it's currently 36-29 to Thunder. Some really good play from both teams, and that it got a little bit erratic for Thunder at times. Um, but I think Pulse really stepped up in in, in that period as well. Um, and it's good to see some of the youngsters in there. I think um, obviously Radaman from South Africa um, is playing quite well. Slot comes goal attack, wing attack, um, and I think Olivia Tachin as well. Um, did have some really good moments in there as well and like I said it was a bit of a battle between her and uh, Lauren Naguera um, but I think for me it's been really really good to see the youngsters in there so Ella Sandrin at wing defence is doing a really great job obviously Barry Neal came on and replaced Lois Pearson in that particular um, period and, and again just kind of slotted in there and did a good job um, so we'll see what changes bring in this one who's going to be wing attack in this one do we think <laughs> uh, it's like a roll of the dice as to who we think is going to be wing attack uh, in this one um, I think it's pre-season isn't it they're going to be rotating yeah. um, all the players around um, and, and give opportunities to see and look at those combinations obviously Pulse have come back at Thunder in this quarter um, you know they're a little bit late in arriving uh, they had uh, some issues with traffic on the way you know have they had a bit of a slow start um, but it's pre-season yeah. you know um, they're certainly not going to lie down and they've you know they came out in that in that uh, in that quarter fighting and they have brought all their uh, all their 15 um, are here with them I think they've actually got a playing squad of 14 today um, obviously we did see in the first period Ashley Decker did go down with an ankle injury so um, unsure at this moment about whether she'll she'll make an appearance looking at her at the moment I would probably say not which is a bit of a shame because I remember her as a youngster playing for Western Park Blades and yep. um, I think initially she was a, a goal attack I think so she's obviously made that change in centre court and you know again she's another one that in the last couple of years has made huge improvements to her game so hopefully her ankle injury is not too bad hopefully she can um, it, obviously if she doesn't come back out on court today which I don't think it is hopefully it's not too bad and she's back uh, in time for the season starting yeah 
so we've got Lois Pearson putting a few shots up there. Looks like she might be entering the fray once again. Let's see what Karen does with the defence in this one. There's obviously lots of defensive options on the bench. Um, we've also got two of our training partners in Elliot McCormick, who's been around the training uh, for a few years now, and Millie Sanders as well, who's another good youngster. Um, it looks like Barry Neal's got a woman's hat bib on, so that could be an interesting combination with Barry Neal and Lois Pearson across that that line so we'll see how that one goes um, we've seen uh, Barry play wing attack a few times for the Thunder Pathway and obviously also for Oldham as well when she's she's played that um, different style of play for wing attack but we'll see how uh, how she goes yeah and I think we forget sometimes how key that wing attack position is in a team um, you know is uh, I think that over the years the wings have always been that not necessarily what people would think an important position, being a wing myself. I think it's a very key position. <laughs> we um, had a good combination, Debbie, all those few years ago when you were my wing fan. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'll pay you later for that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, that, that wing attack, it's that, it's, it's that explosive position. You've got to be that assertive key person that's getting out for that centre pass, haven't you? And, you know, and being that key link and um, ultimately that, that feed into the circle. We saw Liana Leota for several years here at Thunder, an absolutely amazing world All I'm player. saying is that I'm glad I retired when she moved teams. <laughs> she was uh, hard enough to play against in training, not obviously to play against the balls that she feeds and I wouldn't want to do it in a real game. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's, there's two different schools, I think, particularly on wing defence, there's two different schools of wing defences. There's that tight on, run you into the ground kind of wing defence, or there's the slightly more floaty um, off the body wing defence. We always use the example there of um, Sarah Bayman as your more off the body wing defence and someone like Jade Clark as your tight on, run them into the ground. Um, myself, personally, as a keeper, I prefer that tight on player. Um, because it takes the player out for you with that kind of wing defence as well, Deb, you, you used to run them into the ground as well. Because then you knew that when the ball was coming in, it was it was only going to come in from a couple of different players, so it was easier as a keeper to kind of read that um, read that play. Um, that's not to say that the off-the-body wing defence style is bad in any way, shape or form, it's just a completely different style of play and it's, it's what, you, what you prefer, really. Yeah, and what works for you. Yeah, and, and going back to, to Liana there, I mean, obviously I watched her in... in many many games but obviously training as well um you know and she gives so much more to the team and what yeah. i loved about her is you know again not necessarily the tallest player but she um adapted so well and it's the way she kind of takes the ball but as she's passing the ball she uses that to get ahead of the defender and yeah. she's always on the next move always looking you know looking for the next pass yeah and then also the you know the with that vast experience you know that at training she was always feeding back to people always helping yeah. people always helping you know and particularly the youngsters and you know players that like that are invaluable yeah. and you know come along only once oh, in a while yeah. she she was an amazing person to have around the squad uh, amazing player she had obviously so much um, so much experience um, and just completely different style of playing she brought a different perspective to things she brought that kind of New Zealand outlook um, and the, the flair that she brought but then the way she, she would coach players um, in training sessions and, and give off that, that experience and I think it showed on some of our players I remember a few years ago when she, she trained with us before she went back out to play for Pulse I think in New Zealand um, and we were all talking about finesse and touch on the ball um, and that's one of the things that I think a lot of our players have kind of picked up from her and uh, that's really really good to see Okay, so we're ready to go back on now uh, with the scores at 36-29 to Thunder. So we can see, let's just run in from the back. We've got Millie Sanders on at goalkeeper. Emma Dovey's back on at goal defence. Uh, another youngster from Bury Netball Club is Ellie McCormack. She's on at wing defence. Um, so Caroline's still in there at centre. As we've said, Barry Neal at wing attack. Lois goal attack and Joyce Mavrul is still in the shooting position. And I I think to pulse the lineup, we've still got Olivia Tachin at goal shooter. Um, we have, I think, it's Emma Thacker at goal attack. Monique Thompson at wing attack, good uh, young player from academy. Um, Ellie Ratu still on at centre. Um, wing defence, I think, is Isabel Stibbs. Uh, goal defence is Zara Everett, and goalkeeper is still Hallie Adio. Um, so a lot of good youngsters on this court um, currently across both teams. Um, Slotted away with some um, experience through the course as well. It's a bit of
bit of a different style of play now for Pulse with Monique Thompson at wing attack. Um, she's a, a really, really good sort of steady player. She can play across both wing attack and goal attack. Um, I've come up against her many a times at, at Premier League, and you know she's a good, smart young player. Nice a little push in the back from uh, Olivia to Cheen there and Emma Dover. That's kind of always the one you want as a as a defender because it's a nice, easy one to get. Um, sometimes you just got to make it look a little bit more close. Zara Everett there coming through the turn up pulse. This battle between Millie Sanders and Olivia Tachini is one that's kind of gone through the pathway age groups. They are very, um, I think they're a really similar age. They've played against each other a lot of times. Um, so that should be an interesting battle for this period. So we've got over 2,000 people now tuning in to us. I know, and I'm just waffling on my nonsense at the times. <laughs> no, Kerry always known as Stato on the Ooh. team bus, always wins the... The coach quiz. This is the only time when everyone picked me for anything because they always wanted to win the quiz. <laughs> Good strong take there from Joyce and Vula um, under the post. I don't think Adio agreed with that one, but as a defender, you never do. I certainly never did. <laughs> it's not like you to give the umpire an eye roll, Kerry. I have not been able to give any eye rolls out to any umpires for a long time, though. We have been able to play. Five year. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely long ball there into the corner, but offside. And Oh, I didn't think the umpire was going to spot that one, but she did. She just snuck it around the post and saw that one. Yeah, I think Emma Dover using all of her experience there. I mean, forget how... I mean, Emma, is she, she's not even 30 yet, is she? She's 30 this she, year, I believe. 30 this year, yeah, and she's played for Thunder. This will be her 13th, 13th season, 14th season. Do you really count last season, though, because you only played three yeah, games? Yeah, of course games? <laughs> This will be, this will be Emma's 13th, then. Obviously, yeah, Emma's 13th. Last year was her 12th. Um, in Spanish, she doesn't look any older than 21. <laughs> just... Commentator's curse, just giving the ball away I now. Know. But then obviously Thunder just managed to uh, to get that one back. Yeah, talking of Emma, I think Emma's been one of the most underrated Super League players. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, she's been unable to um, take any particular involvement in the England pathway she's kind of been in in some squads through the years um, she featured at Fast Five a couple of years ago and uh, when England won just like to add that one <laughs> but obviously has a career as a teacher and this is always what we talk about you know it's a balance of you know what what you need to do as a career and 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 being that elite netball player and unfortunately you know some people have to make that choice of having a career yeah and hopefully in the next few years, obviously, as the sport gets more professional, then those choices um, won't come up as often, hopefully. Um, you know, it is the ultimate aim to have a fully professional league, which would mean that players don't have to have a job, job alongside it. Um, so we'll see um, how that progresses in the next few years. And, you know, I think Emma's kind of, she's found a really good, good work-life balance alongside netball as well. And that's why I think she's, she's flourished for Thunder over the last couple of years. I mean, I always used to like a call of 30 seconds over because you could always guarantee that if you needed a turnover in the last 30 seconds of a game or a quarter, <laughs> she, she'd be the one that would grab it for you. I always admire that, uh, how, you know, Joyce isn't one of, she's probably about six foot, not, you know, still not one of the taller shooters in the league, but her, the way she physically holds herself, can hold that space and that split that she does, and gaining that ground here to the post. I mean, she's come on so much since she joined us in 2017. Yeah, I mean, she, she's, she's one of those players that I think she's she's naturally quite strong. So when she turned up to us in that 2017 season, um, she'd never really done much much in the way of S&C or weights or anything like that. And she was already ridiculously strong. So these last three or four years, and she's had an S&C programme, and she's, you know, she's been doing all the weights, and... You can really see that in her, you can just see how much stronger she's got, which is an awful proposition um, for any opposing defender. Um, and much like Leanna, all I can say is that I'm glad I don't have to play against him a proper game, because it was bad enough playing against her in training. You know, there's not a lot you can do against her because she is so strong. The ball just sneaking in there, taking... Thunder have taken a lead back out to 10 goals now. I think having some influence there with... Uh, with Captain Emma Dover back on court. Yeah, I think it's quite a young, 
it's quite a young team uh, for Pulse at the moment. Millie Sanders not quite timing had, that one right. She had the right idea, but didn't quite execute right. it. But. Yeah, I think she just took slightly the wrong line on that one and just didn't time it quite as well as she could have done. But it's, uh, it's great to see her um, have an eye on that one and coming out and uh, trying to get it. That's what you want from your young keepers, is not being afraid to go on that fly. Smart play there um, between Barry Neal and Lewis Pearson, and uh, a really great drive around the circle edge there from Pearson. Yeah, it reminds me quite a bit of Catherine Turner in that yeah. uh, you know that that same kind of calm style of play, but just absolutely times everything at the right yeah. moment. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Catherine was the master of that. You know, drive around the edge of the circle, whether it would pull a player off. Um, the shooter or whether you know she would be able to get the ball and she was the absolute master of that move. You knew she was going to do it every time but there was nothing you could do to stop it. Some really good long balls coming in into there into uh, Olivia Tachin but she can't, she's not quite on balance every time but there's always someone on the circle edge waiting to back her up if she needs it. Cardinal sin there from Elia McCormick not being onside. It's not um, it's something as a wing defence that you can't really afford to be doing, especially not on your centre pass. No, as you say, Cardinal sin can't be afford, to, can't afford to give the ball away in this area. bringing that back to a difference of 10 goals on their centre. Thunder here and making it increasingly difficult through the court. Yeah, they've got a really, really good structure through that centre, um, centre third there, um, forcing Pulse to go back and wide. And I know that's something that we were kind of working on um, back in 2019. And I think obviously it's something that Cameron's been working doubly hard on with them these last two years. Patient play here from Thunder, just steadily building that ball, making sure they give the right pass. Yeah, really great pop there into uh, into Umbula from Lois Pearson. Uh, it honestly looks like she's been doing that for years with Joyce, but I can't, really can't wait to see how she progresses through this season. And hopefully, she gets some good court time as well. Ooh. Really good long ball there into Olivia Tachin. Had a really, really good space that ball, and it just went sailed straight over the top. Yeah, so, as, uh, as some advice for a youngster like Millie here, um, obviously the ball's kind of gone over her head a little bit. Um, you know, what advice would you give to her? Um, I mean, she does give up a little bit in height um, to to Chin. Um, I think if you do give up that that height too, then you have got to come off the body a little bit more, and you have got to move your feet. I think it's all about it's all about the footwork. As a as a defender, particularly as a keeper, it is all about your footwork especially if that shooter is that little bit taller than you. Um, and I think she's just getting a little bit too on the body at the moment and it's something that she just probably just needs to take half a step up to give herself that room to go back and up if she needs to because at the moment she's so body on that when that ball's coming over she can get enough perch on the footwork to be able to get up on that. So I would just say to her, come off the body a little bit and just work your feet, move your feet. On a player like that as well, someone who's not wanting to move, I'd probably try and slip around, slip around the back of her as well and try and force her out of the circle somewhere she doesn't want to be. Make her work on that and make her change what she's doing rather than you adapting um, as well. So she had a really, really good position then and then she's just kind of let her come back into circle. Yeah, so we've gone through a bit of a scrappy uh, period of play here. It seems giving the ball away quite loosely to each other. A bit of pinball going on in this quarter. I mean, it's always, always a little bit more difficult to keep that flow in pre-season because you have so many changes, you know, every quarter. You've seen different combinations. And sometimes it takes a little bit, bit of time to settle. Yeah, I think in, in a normal 
um, in season game you wouldn't make this many changes so there is always that um, settling down period um, anytime you go back on the court especially when you're making what about four or five different changes um, that's exactly what we're talking about then uh, Sanders was just that little bit too much on the body and that ball yeah. just sailed straight over her head um, but yeah I mean it's it, it, it's good in these pre-season games that you do make so many changes because it means that you, you get a lot of your youngsters on and give them some really good court time um, and then that's where you hope that over the season it does pay off I don't think that you know we teach we teach shooters to roll in the game. You know I think you, you talked about an option there of of you know of, of the defender rolling round. You know I've seen Jiva Mentor executes that so well, and someone like Courtney Bruce. Um, but I don't necessarily I don't see it coached a lot here, and I think defenders could actually do so much more. Yeah, I think there is certainly as a defender there's a time and a place for it. Um, it's something that I only kind of put into my game in the last few years. And, only use it in a in, in certain um, you know certain situations it wasn't something that I was completely comfortable with but if we teach the girls at a younger age how to do it and how to do it effectively then it's certainly something that we can we can run through into the senior game and on a tall shooter if the ball's in the air for that long if it's got snow on it as we say then um, there's loads of time to be able to do it and, and force your shooter back up the court so that it just goes over there right instead okay so I've reached Another break, and the score is 46 to Thunder, 39 to Pulse, so pretty even at the moment. Yeah, that was quite a good uh, a good period to watch. Obviously, quite a lot of youngsters in the court, <coughs> uh, which is always um, fun to see. Um, so we'll see what teams come out in this period. It looks like Millie Roscoe is going to be coming on for Thunder into goal shooter um, another one of our pathway um, youngsters uh, another one also that plays at um, Berry Netball so really good to see another youngster getting out on court um, and Siggy Berger has just put a bid back on so we may be seeing her come back on to goal shooter for Pulse um, and also Lindsay Keeble by the looks of things so a bit more experience coming back on the court for Pulse that was quite a young team for them um, so we'll just see what positions everyone's going to be coming back out into. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, Siggy Berger and Rademan out there again. I'd love to see more of that. Um, mm. I mean, they obviously play together for the country, but uh, to see them playing together at club. Yeah. I think um, that's going to be a really uh, key and exciting partnership for Pulse. They've got some real international flair in that um, attack line for Pulse um, and it will be interesting because they should have quite a good um, combination you think obviously with the South African connection. So yeah well we've been talking about uh, a lot of international flair um, hmm. throughout the Super League there's also a very good element of home nations players we see obviously through Sirens um, with the Scottish players there with Celtic Dragons the Welsh players there but also now we see um, the Northern Ireland Warriors yep. and they have I think it's six representatives across the league now yeah they've got that. so a few which can only be beneficial for them yeah I mean you look at we've got Caroline obviously here playing for Thunder there's Vito at Leeds Rhinos and Michelle McGee as well at Rhinos oh yeah Michelle McGee at Rhinos yeah with two at Surrey. Storm we've got um, Neve Cooper and Emma McGee and then here for Pulse today I don't think it looks like she's not taking part today but Michelle Drain who, as we know, again, I think a very underrated player. Uh, oh, we've yeah. played against her many times at Premier League level, and she is, you know, wh when you're talking about that man-on-man um, -man kind of real, you know, drill the wing attack down, a great wing defence, yeah. as we found out to our detriment last season. Yes. yes. Uh, so the lineups in this one for Thunder, we going from goal shooter, we've got Millie Roscoe in the shooter. Very Neal at goal attack. Caroline O'Hanlon has moved back to wing attack. Amy Cass has gone back to centre. Ella Standrin is back on at wing defence. And then we've got Becky Airy and Lauren Naguira um, in the circle. And for Pulse, we've got Siggy Berger in at shooter. Emma Thacker still on at goal attack. Uh, Monique Thompson at wing attack. Um, Adeen Thomas at centre. Uh, Fumi Fidoju at wing defence. And then in the circle, we've got Lindsay Keeble and Hallie Adio. Um, Again, um, really good, strong lead, um, lean and um, shot rejection on that one from Lindsay Keeble using her height to full advantage. She's a player sometimes that 
you, you've just got to you've got to get that ball up and you've just got to shoot it straight away. If you give her a chance to get a lean over your shot and jump, then you're in trouble. Um, so I'd, I'd just say to these two very young shooters, just turn and shoot. Yeah, I mean that that's a very good part of uh, of Lindsay Keeble's game. Um, you know, we've seen it for years and years. She is so good over that shot. Yeah. She uses every inch of her six foot four to her advances, that's for sure. Caliadio there with uh, good strong arms over that pass and Keeble picks it up. Yeah, I think a little bit of an experience. Obviously we've got the two young shooters on. Uh, Miller Roscoe's just entered the fray, but um, you know, they'll just take a little bit of time to settle and uh, obviously put a couple of ball in, in, into hands, but hopefully they'll learn from that. Yeah, Thompson just overcooks that one a little bit to Berger. Um, Thunder just struggling a little bit with the back line initially. I think Alessandro probably should have kept going on that strong lead through the court then, instead of putting back onto that one. Way the pass there from O'Hanlon. And Adio comes through onto that one. I think Ali, um, she's a, an interesting one who's really, really improved in the past couple of I think last season was her breakout year. Um, she obviously worked with Sam Bird now for a couple of years as she was at the Stars with her the season before. Um, and I think, yeah, she's, she's really improved. She's got the height, she's got the athleticism. So really be interesting to see how she progresses in the next couple of years. And obviously if she can, um, she's already in the England programme, um, but if she can uh, get a foot on that door properly and then get some hats under her belt. Sigurd Berger there scoring multiples, taking the score to 48-40. So still not that much to choose from between the teams at the moment. Obviously, the Thunder have kind of maintained the lead they established in that first yeah. quarter. Really, really good front cut there, um, Millie Roscoe, and uh, really calm shot under that pressure. And, uh, she just puts it away easily. Yeah. Hopefully that will get us to settle a little bit. A lot of encouragement there from yeah. the Thunder subs on the bench. Yeah. Really wanting the teammate to do well. Yeah. Really great arms over that one from Ellis Standing, but the ball somehow managed to sneak its way through to Siggy Berger. Ellis Sandrin's the kind of player she just she doesn't give an inch. Um, and I think when you're playing against her, you know you're playing against her. Um, she's a really, really strong player. Um, and if she has to put her body on the line to get that ball back, she will do it. That Malawi versus South Africa battle again back in the circle. Yeah, obviously Berger just stepped in there and Naguira held the ground. But she was able to get the shots away in the end. Just a few on, a couple of unforced errors there from uh, from Thunder and uh, the momentum. I was just about to say the momentum <laughs> was was going with pulse, but it's gone straight through Thomas's hands. Yes. Some really great pressure then again on that drive from Ella Standrin that forced that error. Some good dodges there from Millie Roscoe around the long arms of Lindsay Keeble. And then she just pops through the top nice and easily. And there's some great rotation around the, the circle there between Neil and Roscoe, just opening up that space. I think they've got a really good understanding because they played together in the pathway. Um, they were the under-21 shooters uh, a year or last year and the year before. Um, so they've got a really good understanding together. I think they also played the, um, the Netball Europe the other year together as well. See that arms over the, uh, the shot crash there from Keeble again. Just turn and shoot better, turn and shoot. And then obviously jumps in the shot but lands on Barry and gets contact. Yeah, I think it's changing up what you do against something like that. You know what Keeble's going to do now and I think they're, you know, it's, it's learning from it. It's then encouraging the, uh, the obstruction which took Keeble out of the game then and able to get the shot away. Yeah, I think you've, you've got um, to play to your strengths but you've also got to play and uh, expose on the weaknesses of, of other players because every player's got their strengths and weaknesses and You've got, to, you've got to expose those weaknesses if you can. First you've got to find them, of course, but then you've got to, you've got to work out ways of getting around them and obviously how you're going to beat them. The 
So caution there against O'Hanlon for forcing the contact. Good tip there from Lauren, but she was too much down. in it for no. a caution, but... No, I'm not. Anyway. That, that's not one that I would uh, agree with, for sure. But you have to she's, take, she's taken over as the eye roller of the team, though, I think. I'm not <laughs> passing any comment on that one. Not quite the right ball to choose there. Um, you know, playing against someone with as um, long a reach as Kiba, I think you've got to make sure you put the ball away from her. Good closing speed there from Adio. Yeah, I think it was a very kind of long lead and you've got to keep that speed. Yeah, I'm taking that ball. So I think you can see this is probably this is one of the least experienced kind of attacks from Thunder as far as exp experience goes. Yeah. So I think this is where well, this is the only time they're gonna learn. Yeah, exactly. And I think you know it's up to Caroline and Amy to to kind of be talking them through it as well and to helping them out of it. Good sit there from Lauren, but slightly too close. Yeah, I couldn't really tell from here the distance there, but obviously the umpire's called it. I, think I mean, I don't saw, think it was there. Um, at the start of last season, obviously, Naguira came from Pulse to Thunder. Um, and like any defence, I mean, we'd obviously had, you know, yourself and Emma that have played together for so many years. You knew each other inside out. Obviously, Lauren came in as a new player. Took time. A little bit of time for her to settle. But you could see even by the third and fourth game that we played that she was really, made, you know, taking some big strides. Yeah, she really, she really settled into it. Um, well and she, she certainly improved in her, you know at a rate of knots and uh, it was it was really really good to see again Kibo there with the shot block um, I think it's just a case of both Neil and uh, Roscoe just playing a little bit smarter with the sh with the shot you know maybe tempting that jump first um, and getting Kibo out of the way um, or choosing which defender you're shooting against yeah, good tip out there from Rebecca Airy Possession still is close. Really, really good defensive work there from Thunder. Um, they set up such a great box around that, around the circle and the post that it meant that um, Pulse had to lob the ball over the top and uh, Ella Sandy put enough pressure on that ball just went out. So, really, really great defensive setup there from Thunder. I mean, I probably I was agree. watching that then. I'm not and quite I sure see there was anything mm. in that at all, but, you know. Oh, and look at there from Amy Carter. I think there's just a little bit of timing on some of these ones we're coming out on, but it's again, it's like in the one with Miller oh. Sanders, it's really, really great to see. Oh, and um, then goes down there in the middle, not quite sure what happened there, but I think there's, uh, there's been a few tasty... Uh, Hans just just working that round, um, pops it into the corner into Amy Carter into Barry Neal and goal. Great timing on that shot and a good decision there to hold the shot until Adio had jumped with a little uh, hand there from Winter Keeble. Really great defensive wall there on that centre pass. It's forcing pulls backwards um, and that's what you want to see. That's what you want on the centre passes. You don't want that ball going forward. Yeah, you'll always get that that good defensive element from Amy Carter in there, obviously. A centre wing defence always gives you that great defensive dynamic as well. Really, and really good uh, pressure there from Becky Airy um, on that shot. And obviously Lauren from shutting Siggy Berger down that caused that hell ball. Great to see. Yeah, and I think, you know, as, as Saka was shooting there, she took so, you know, she looks hesitant. As soon as you start, as you look, you know, and, and players learn that as they, uh, with experience, if yeah. you look panicked, if you look like, you know, you're taking several shots, the umpire, you put it in the umpire's head. And it's learning that experience not to do that and to look as calm as anything, like you've got all the time in the world. Yeah. You are, uh, is it a duck or a swan? Calm on the surface and paddling away underneath. 
Really, really great rotational work there from Millie Roscoe. She just snuck through and popped that ball over to Barry Neal. Just can't quite put that away. Thunder are working really, really hard defensive here and they're making pulse um, work really hard to get that ball through. But when you've got an outlet in the circle like the Sigurd sometimes, you can do all the work in the world, but it can just go over. Just Carter combining well with O'Hanlon. They're obviously used to playing together regularly. Plenty of understanding there. And to keep using all her experience there and trying to force, force something from O'Hanlon. Well finished off there by Roscoe. There's about 10 seconds left to play. Full centre. Lots of pressure. All the cut pass and Neguera just picks it up, which is good. And they're trying to get it in for the final goal. Just tried to force it in a little bit too much. And it looks like on that one, Adio's been caught in the eye. Um, hopefully she's all right. Yeah, so still again, nothing score-wise to choose between the teams. I think 53 that was a to 4 to 6. So it's just maintaining this seven goal difference. Yeah, so we'll see uh, see what change we get for this final period as well. That was a, a good and interesting quarter to watch, obviously with the um, the innit experience in the thunder shooting circle um, but I thought they worked really well together and they rotated and you know when they began to to work out how to play around um, the wingspan of, of Lindsay Keeble um, and obviously all her experience um, which was really really good to see and obviously with Alessandri at wing defence as well giving absolutely no quarter at all um, and the experience in there of O'Hanlon and Carter in the middle. Adio was just being um, checked again just to make sure that she's alright. I don't know if she took a poke to the eye or a, a scratch, but yeah, she's just been checked over by the physios and the doctors, so hopefully she's uh, she's alright. I think one injury is uh, quite enough for one day. Yeah. Just trying to keep an eye on we see what changes we can make over there. Yeah. Just um, waiting for some uh, not too much some movement. stats to come through, but looking so far, Joyce Mavula is on fire. She's scored 27 from 29 shots and wow. the various goal attacks at the moment um, have scored five from quick bit of math nine so the goal <laughs> attack's not quite living up to the same stats well i think obviously the shoot, so. there was a few rejected shots in that one obviously with a little bit of inexperience in there but you know the it, it's it's a learning curve um this is the first time that Millie Roscoe was obviously ever played at this level. Uh, same with Lois Pearson, even though she's been in and around the training squads um, for quite some time now. Um, this is the first time she's really ever stepped up to this level, so it's really great to see her learning curve. Um, and Barry Neal, I know she was um, named last year, but obviously never took the court. So again, this is really the first time she's had experience at this level. I know she's played for England, um, but all the players racing to get back on court. It's so like little kids there. Let's players. see what changes we've got here. So for Pulse, we've got Olivia Tachin back on the shooter. Kira Rothwell at goal attack. Wing attack is, I think that's Isabel Stubbs. Centre is Ellie Ratu. Sorry, no, I'm wrong. Wing attack is um, Mithabra Radaman. And wing defence is Isabel Stubbs. Goal defence is Keeble and Adio is fine to continue at keeper. Um, for Thunder we've got Joyce and Vula, Lois Pearson, Caroline O'Hanlon, Amy Carter, Becky Ayer, Emma Dolby and Lauren Naguera. Yeah, and it's great to see all the positive messages coming through. My phone is uh, literally keeping going. Great to hear from Caroline Barker. Apparently fearing for a job. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I waffle too much for that. But nice to have all the comments coming through. Uh, I was also trying to talk about as many topic, topics today around netball so is there anything you want us to talk about we're quite happy to uh, receive uh, requests yeah I mean from from my point of view it's just really nice to see some some live sport um, it's not something that obviously we've been able to to get to see um, but yeah it's, 
it's uh, it's amazing to uh, to be watching this and to be privileged enough to be able to see it and hopefully you're all enjoying the coverage as well and the fact that we've been able to do this today as well so enjoy this last 10 minutes of network oh and look at there from Amy Carter this is a really really strong defensive unit um, from Thunder um, and just as I say that Lauren Aguero does that so yeah it's a really really strong defensive unit um, obviously there's there's a lot of shifting that can be done when um, Laura Markman and the Cardwell are back in um, but I mean oh, having Becky so area wing defence is another good option so Josh Marilla there cause for the contact deemed to be pushing away into the goalkeeper there again that's one you want as a keeper really really good strength and a good backing up on that one from Lauren um, just forced Livy to chain off the back line and uh, got the turnover in favour of Thunder. A great drive from Emma. To be honest, that's been Emma's trademark for the last couple of years. That great diagonal drive she just was sent to court and um, such good outlet for Thunder. And the ball there with uh, Strong on the shot, wanting to put right what she'd done wrong. Really good centre pass there. Um, great uh, drive from O'Hanlon to Circle Edge and a, and a great pop to Zimbula and she gets the contact call. Yeah, I will say, obviously, you know, like we were talking about the, the, the key wing attack position for Thunder. Um, we saw Laura, Laura Malcolm there, she's played it with England and, and we've seen her there before. So Karen's trying different things and when they first tried, they tried Caroline in there. I wasn't convinced at first, but the last couple of games, I think she's really, obviously, you know, now that taking that position on board and it's just, you know, every centre she's out there taking, you know, receiving the centre pass. Yeah. I mean, there's that phrase, isn't it? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. But <laughs> Caroline's out there proving that that's definitely not true. But you yeah. know, she's Although such she... a good, strong athlete that she can do anything. She did tell me though she got her first 50 caps for Northern Ireland as a goal attack. I remember watching her. I remember seeing her in something I can't remember what it was as a goal attack. And but even that still shocked me that her first 50 caps were at goal attack. But yeah, I've seen her shoot. I'm not so sure. <laughs> <laughs> I think learning to shoot is a is a little bit. A bit different, um, but no, I think she's shown what a good athlete she is and, and what a good sort of intelligent head she's got on her shoulders. I don't know if she does it all this <laughs> Yeah, we're clearly very adaptable, and as I say, you know, I was really impressed with her today and, and at the pre-season friend, uh, the previous pre-season friend, friend that she played in. Um, but I suppose it's getting used to those different combinations as well, isn't it? Yeah. Oh dear, heavy fall there. Oh, Kira was down, but she looks. No, she's fine. She's a tough one. Yeah, so it's great to see this oh, uh, brilliant drive there from Lois Pearson. It's a great centre pass out from Thunder. Kind of textbook, really. Joyce just popping through the middle out the top of the circle, and Lois on a great drive in along the baseline. Absolutely perfect. Easy time. One. They're the ones as a defender, though, you absolutely hate. Good strong play there from Sachin, a good outing in with uh, Ellie Ratu. And we're back to seven goals. Are yeah. we ever going to get away from this? I think this is where we're going to stick. Oh, look. Joyce gets called there for, uh, I think, obstruction um, or contact with her arms behind her. Um, that's one thing as a shooter you've got to be really, really careful of. Yeah, Joyce has been pulled for this um, over the last couple of seasons. It seems to, I don't know if it's kind of a a change in the well, changing the rules or yeah, as a good tip um, there from Emma Dove how umpires perceive a, a rule um, obviously she's you know she's been taught to kind of put a hand up for the ball and she's holding a space as much as possible but is you know as you can see there is being pushed with some force but quite often has been deemed as obstructing for putting the hand up yeah I mean there's a battle and a half going on between Joyce and Bill and Harry Adio at the moment um, Joyce is just acting like nothing's going on. But you love to see a good battle though in that ball, do. don't you? We do, and, and oftentimes when there's a player reacting like that, sometimes you know that you know, you're know you under the skin and you've got him, so... I think Joyce, just keep going. Really good rotation of play there from Paulson, some good strong play from uh, Emma Dovey to shut that down, but... Nice easy pop over the top to uh, to Chain using her height. She's a 
really good to see that Pulse have got so many options as well across their their line as well. And they all seem to work um, pretty well. Yeah, and I think, you know, in any season, it's important to have a strong bench. Great pick up there from because, Rebecca Because, you know, in, in normal times, you never know, you know, what injuries you're going to get or, um, you know, when you need to have that, that key change up and, and have the confidence in, in putting a player on. Um, but even more so the, this season, you know, if, if the players that might get affected through a, whatever COVID reason or might be isolating or something like that, I think the teams that are going to be successful are the, the ones that have that strength in depth. As we oh. see, you know, from both the teams here today, they have that significant strength in depth. Absolutely. And, and they're bringing that youth through and giving them all the experience here now. So it yeah. seems like these, I think, will, will do well. Yeah, I think for a lot of them as well, it's a bit of a learning curve. Like I think like Olivia to change pass the ball out, and then she just stood there. Whereas you know, pass the ball out and move, and make the defender do something different. Good strong take there from Joyce. She's having a real battle now with Lindsay Keeble as well. So she's not fussy about who she has a battle with in that circle. So yeah, pulls defence there, forcing from the back. This is a really good defensive effort on this one from Pulse. Really impressed with this. But you just see again, it's that experience around the edge of Carter and O'Hanlon. Yeah. Just calmly taking the ball, putting it in as and when they want to. There's obviously some plenty of noise coming from the Pulse bench in them, adding to that pressure. Yeah, I think Carter was really clever there in the fact that you know she put the ball down and away from where Lindsay Kubel could get to it. Um, and that, that proved clear. Obviously, when you've got someone so tall, and then you've got Lois Pearson, um, who's got such a low centre of gravity that you can put the ball down and make it difficult for Kibo. If you're going to put the ball up at chest high or head high, that's where Lindsay Kibo's going to want that ball going. So, you know, really make her work for it and change the angle where the ball's coming in each time. And so, Carter was really, really clever there. Contact there, just knocking the ball out of Pearson's hands. Just giving Thunder that chance to reset. Smart play there from Lewis Person again. Draws the jump from Keeble to, uh, to open it up for herself and gets the obstruction call. Just as a, a, a random bit of uh, knowledge, one of our table officials today is actually Lewis Pearson's father. <laughs> well, you know, the netball family. He loves his netball. And we'll give a shout out to the umpires today as well. We've got, uh, just making the call there, is Emma Pike. We'll have Farrah Jora here with uh, a reserve of Sarah Gallagher, who looks absolutely freezing because this is one of the coldest sports halls I have, I have been in, I have trained in. I'm freezing, so I I've feel got the thermals pain. on. <laughs> There was one training session here where I trained the entire session with my hoodie on, it was that cold, so I feel that pain. Some really, really good defensive work there from Thunder. Um, and in that time, we've seen that Elia McCormick has come on to goalkeeper, which is where we usually see Elia. Yeah, she's quite a versatile youngster. She can play anywhere across the defence. Good strength there again from, uh, from Joyce and Vila. Um, and a really great rebound as well. And we're now out to nine goals, 61-52 in favour of Thunder. So they have just stepped it up a little bit in these last few minutes. I think there's been some really, really smart play from Thunder. And uh, Keeble are judged to have contacted Mavula over the top there. Not sure she agreed, but we've got to go with the umpire's decision and Mavula puts the ball away. So, quick play there from Pulse. Looks like a well-drilled centre pass. Hanlon again just obviously slotting seamlessly into that wing attack position um, using her incredible speed and fitness and strength. Oh, long ball there from Keeble into Cheen's toe is just out of court. Ooh. 
good take there from Rebecca Airy. Nice little uh, ballet spin in the middle. But there's a contact call. Pulsar now just starting to drop a little bit onto a two on one against um, Mbulu in the circle, which is allowing Pearson to do a lot of playmaking outside the circle. Um, but they're not dropping into a strict two on one, so they are giving her a lot of room, which, to be honest, against a player like Joyce, you can't really do. Um, I mean, it's just allowing Pearson to just play off a little tiny bit. So we're into the last 15 seconds. Oh, McCormick is just fingertips away from that. But again, as we were talking about earlier, she should have given herself a little bit more room. She might have got a hand to that one. Nice long bomb from Pearson, but unfortunately the clock just runs out. And that's the end of the game. Um, it finishes 65-54 to Thunder. So obviously just pulled it out that, um, in that last one to, uh, to take the game by 11 really enjoyed that yeah I'm glad we came away from that seven goals oh. <laughs> but it just took uh, I think a bit more of an experienced lineup of Thunder in that final quarter that's allowed them to just just take it take that away a little bit and we've gone to an 11 goal uh, win yeah and it was it was nice to see obviously um, all of them take the court today and, and get some good court time in there as well and uh, lots of good combinations out there yeah um, and I think um, you know and uh, we can, you know, stress like ahead of this game that it's this first time, you know, it's, it's taken quite a bit to get this this game underway. Um, all the protocols we've got to go through, and we also, you know, with the increased anxiety around not just for players and staff, just around the country, in all of the players um, being tested ahead yeah. of the game. Um, they will obviously have to get used to that now because as part of Super League from next week they will be being tested. Oh. Um, so a bit of insight yeah. for you there everyone yep yeah, so next week they undergo a pcr test to start with just to kind of get you know and it's it's, it's getting everyone used to it but it was uh, it was actually quite funny at training the other night as as the players obviously um came in individually and then had to go away and sit in the cars but the the kind of the relief once they got that negative test even though obviously <laughs> you know only they know it but who knows with coronavirus where you can pick it up or yeah, whatever but obviously when you've got teaching you squad like the, Emma and yeah but the relief on on the players although we had some drama some of the players put in the um swab hey. uh, or taking the swab um, i was quite do funny it. to watch no i don't i, I, I don't, don't personally but uh, but yeah i mean it's great that looking forward now that you know we've we've had quite a few pre-season friendlies um it's just great to be watching some netball it's great to be seeing some netball we've um brought to you this live stream quite late in the day and I'd like to thank Tom Noakes our technical expert uh, for making this happen um, we've been able to bring you with uh, with scores and times alongside that um, expert co commentators and Kerry well, Almond and uh, even a special guest appearance from Gary Neville so I know I just like to say that I did get ditched off the commentary at the beginning for Gary but and I'm not holding that against Gary it's always interesting to hear from a different point of view. But yeah, yeah it's, it's great. And hopefully uh, everybody's enjoyed the netball out there. It's, uh, you know, we, we know it, everybody's not able to play there, play out there and at the moment can, can watch very little. We brought the Rise Again Festival pre-Christmas, yeah. um, which we had a significant people subscribe to and that was just amazing, the support around that. Um, and it's been great to be able to do this today. Yeah, it's, it's been a really good game to watch as well. Um, obviously, just uh, thank Pulse uh, for coming up um, to watch this game, obviously, uh, to play the game. And obviously, to any Pulse fans out there as well that are watching, I um, just hope, just want to say as well, that I hope that Ashley Decker is okay. Just like a slight ankle tweak, but hopefully that she's uh, she's fine in the next few weeks ahead of the season. Um, and really, really great to watch some, some good youngsters and some good, um, just some good quality netball as well. Yeah, and it. I think uh, for everybody out there, there is some probably two lots of exciting uh, pieces of news around netball. I can't say anything, but um, you know, just so that you know, things are going to be happening. There's, like I say, two great announcements, and it'll be great for the netball public to see what's going to be happening 
our league is going ahead and uh, we just can't wait to get going so oh, well, about three really weeks to go looking just forward less than three weeks to go after a break of obviously nearly a year um, for the Super League obviously it finished in March um, and for it to get going again in, in, in the beginning of February you know 11 months without any um, top flight netball in this country is, is, a, is a long long time um, I think the players are absolutely raring, raring to go yeah Absolutely, and you will be getting to see plenty of netball. Can't say more than that, but she does this all the time. She likes to tease you, and then you <laughs> sat there like, and you wanted more, but she won't tell you. No, can't tell you. Um, yeah, so really, really enjoyed it today. Hope you guys all uh, enjoyed it as well. Um, obviously, want to wish uh, Pulse a safe trip home through the you know the freezing cold fog and everything else that's going on. Okay, so we'll uh, wrap up there. It's been great to be with you today and uh, hopefully see you sometime soon.